We're so excited to have with us Russ Miller. Russ Miller is a creation scientist. Wait a minute. Did you say you found a scientist who believes in creationism? Well, I'll listen to his arguments, but I suggest grabbing some popcorn because this is likely to be comedy material. We have the pleasure this morning of having a guest speaker, Dr. Russ Miller. Who whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you say Dr. Russ Miller? I'm quite sure he does not hold a doctorate, and he is not a scientist. But, okay, I'll let that slide. Let's just see if his arguments hold water. Well, again, my name is Russ Miller, and I live in Flagstaff, Arizona. My wife, Joanna, and I, we have a ministry we feel God gave us to steward that we call Creation, Evolution, and Science Ministries. And we came up with this name because, well, sometimes we talk about creation and biblical accounts, and sometimes we talk about evolution and evolutionary accounts. And so we take all of these things and we compare them to the scientific evidence. Think about this. Aren't creation and evolution, aren't they exactly the same thing? We're going to t take a look at the religious belief of Darwinian evolution. <clears throat> uh, religion means the belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal god or gods. Calling science a religion is just silly. And we're actually going to compare that to some evidences. Now, real science is a Christian's best friend. Real science will always support the Word of God. Never has one verse in Scripture been scientifically refuted. And so what we're going to do today is look at things you can test, study, and observe. All right, Mr. Miller, give us your best arguments. We're waiting. What's the scientific evidence that you have for creation? And it better be better than seeing the Virgin Mary's face in a piece of toast. You know, the Bible says, For by Him were all things created. By Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, were all things created. And by Jesus, all things consist. Jesus holds us all together. Jesus holds the entire universe together, including us. And the Bible goes on to say, Having made peace through His blood on the cross, Jesus holds us together. Let me show you another one of God's fingerprints upon His universe this is a tiny microscopic protein by the name of laminin, which Lou Giglio has made famous over the past six months. It's literally the body's cell adhesion molecule. I see some guys out there looking at me cross-eyed. Let me, let me put it so guys understand. It's God's duct tape. It holds us together, okay? Now, if you saw the uh, side view mirror on my truck, you'd know what I mean, okay? Anyways, it's God's duct tape. It holds us together. Well, here is a scientific diagram of laminin. It's in the shape of a cross. Laminin, which holds us together, the body's cell adhesion molecule, what I call God's duct tape, is in the shape of a microscopic cross. You are literally held together by trillions of these tiny crosses. Let me pause here for just a second to say that to believe what he's telling you, you have to buy into three very stupid ideas. Number one, you have to be stupid enough to think that laminin actually looks like the picture he showed you when it really looks like this. Number two, you have to be stupid enough to think that a cross actually looks like the Christian symbol that people show today when it really was a stake. The word cross in both the Latin and the Greek meant stake and never implied two pieces of wood intersecting each other in the way that it's shown today. And number three, you have to believe that even if they did both look like two pieces of wood intersecting each other, you have to be stupid enough to think that that would mean something and that that would be some divine revelation. Um, so let's continue with the stupidity. And I like to call that one of God's fingerprints upon his creation. It's just a fact that we are fearfully and wonderfully made by our loving God. Well, here's another one of the fingerprints of God upon his creation, as I like to call them. And this is called the X structure that's found at the core of the Whirlpool Galaxy. So NASA, they aimed the Hubble telescope at the very core, the very center of the Whirlpool Galaxy, which is a grand design galaxy made up of an estimated 400 billion stars. So they took a picture of the very center, and here's the picture that they came up with. Now, they call that the X structure, and you can call it whatever you want, but I call it 
one of the fingerprints of God that are found upon his creation. He has them in derision. They're trying to deny him, but when they look through a telescope or when they look through an electron microscope, God's right there in front of them every step of the way. I think the problem with people like this is that they are so stupid that they have no idea how stupid they are. You see, if you're very, very stupid, how can you possibly realize that you're very, very stupid? There would be no science without Christianity. From laptops to radios to space shuttles to penicillin, none of that would exist. We'd still be back in the dark ages if it weren't for Christianity. Youth ages, immaturity is outgrown. Ignorance can be educated and drunkenness sobered, but stupid lasts forever. Well, how do you know the Bible is the word of God? Well, let's look at internal consistency and prophetic accuracy. <clears throat> Actually, there are hundreds of contradictions. There are dozens of failed prophecies and zero prophecies that can be shown to have been fulfilled. Uh, but that's beside the point. What is the scientific arguments for creationism? Can we get to the science, please? The most popular radiometric dating technique has been potassium argon. Potassium decays into argon. They measure the amount of argon, say it takes this long to form. They overlook the fact, what if it was contaminated with argon? Actually, contamination is carefully controlled for in radiometric dating. What if argon was in the rock when it first formed? It's going to make, date millions and billions of years older than it is. And at this point, Russ is just lying to you. Uh, he knows that potassium argon dating is used with igneous rock. It's used with magma. Uh, because when it's hot, the lava resets the clock. The argon is a noble gas that escapes, uh, but once that lava cools down and the magma is cool, then the argon becomes trapped, and so the decay rate clock starts from the point at which it cools down. But they've really messed up my book and everything because I use potassium argon since that's the most popular method. In the last six months, they've come out and finally admitted it doesn't work. They're not even using it anymore, and it's been their number one dating method for the last 80 years. And now Russ is just lying to you again. Um, I guess if you're not a scientist, but you claim to be, and you're not a doctor, but you claim to be, and you don't know how to argue against the clear scientific evidence, you just make up a lie and claim that they no longer use potassium argon dating with no evidence, no citation, no reference. I don't even know what he's talking about, but it's absolutely still used, and it is still a very reliable way to date igneous rock. Well, doesn't carbon dating show that fossils are millions of years old? You know, you have to be an incredibly dishonest person to strawman your opponent's arguments so badly. No scientist will ever tell you that carbon dating proves the Earth is millions of years old. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,700 years, so it's useful to roughly 50,000 years. In special circumstances, maybe up to 60 to 80,000 years. But, you know, the upper limit is around 50,000 years. Far more than is necessary to invalidate your 6,000-year-old hypothesis. But, no, you are strawmanning your opponent's arguments. But, I guess that's what you do if you claim to be a scientist and you're not, and you claim to be a doctor and you're not, and you don't know how to reply to the actual scientific evidence for evolution none of which you correctly showed in your entire presentation, then I guess, what are you left with? Lies and attacking straw men.